Hey everybody, this is Bandor Tyrell, the owner of Antiquity Furniture and Fun, and also the owner of Debauchery Furniture, and a founding member of TAP, the Adult Partnership. I'm here today to shoot a video that's going to show you a new product that we're putting out, which is a medieval builder's kit. Something uh, that will help anybody who has a medieval or fantasy sim be able to build some pretty cool buildings quickly and easily. Uh, I'm going to pan over here and I'll show you what we're talking about. So, If you look, you can see we've got this all laid out here. This is the kit and everything that comes in it. Um, go through it really quickly what you get. You get these walls and they're designed to be something that you might see in a medieval building or a Tudor style building. Uh, you get eight different styles of walls they're all set to be modular, so they have all the parts of this kit are sized to be uh, used together and they fit together. And so these are five meter high walls and seven of them are seven meters wide and one of them is half width, so it's actually, it's actually four meters wide. Um, so it's not quite half. But these are like, uh, it's like a building blocks game where you can sit and play with these things and, and make your own little buildings so you can arrange them however you want um, in addition to that and they have different different styles so two of them are made for openings like this is a window opening this one has a door opening so you can put a door in there and this has um, I'm not using physics on it but I actually made it in a way that you can walk through it so you don't have to have physics to be able to walk through it if you do it right and I did it that way um, so one side is darker than the other so this is for exterior walls. So you can put these on the outside of the, the building. The lighter side goes to the outside. The darker side goes to the inside. We also have three different size roofs. There's a 7x7. Seven seven. There's a 15x15 15 15 and a 23x15. So that gives you the ability to build different size footprint floor plans. We also have three different sized floor sections and they uh, cut, there's a 7 by 7 a 15 by 15 and this one is a 7 by 15 and you can use them in different combinations to create the different size floor plans that you want and then you use the other parts on top of it to, to build the building we also have extra things that you need so you basically have everything that you need to make a building here at least a one-story building. This is a one-story kit. We're going to come out with another kit later that's going to be for second and higher floors. It'll include things like stairs, balconies, uh, walkways, handrails, and it'll have different floor segments with holes in them for stairs and things like that so you can uh, create different kinds of uh, arrangements. We'll also later on add things like uh, bay windows and stuff like that to go with it, but for right now it's it's just a basic kit. Um, you also have three different styles of windows that fit within the hole for that door, the, the wall that has the window in it. There's one with uh, one pane of glass, four panes of glass, and then one with nine panes of glass. They also have uh, two different styles of glass. One, this is called what we call the dirty uh, glass, and there's twenty. They're, they're completely opaque, 20% clear, 40, 60, 80% clear. And then we have another style which is more like uh, medieval uh, leaded glass. And same thing, you have the leaded glass, it has opaque, 20%, 40%, 60%, and 80% clear. And those are all done through a texture changer, so it's very easy to, to manage. Then there's some steps to go in front of the door. We also provide a functioning door that has cool door scripts in it, so it actually opens and closes. Uh, and you can put that into your builds and use it and link them in and it, it all works perfectly fine. Uh, let's see what else is part of this kit. Um, another big thing back here is what, what I call beams. These are wooden beams that you will use in your build. You can use them for anything you want. Um, they come linked together by size. So there's the smallest one is 0.25 meters by 0.25 meters. So it's, it's square on the end. And then the lengths um, are in one meter increments from one meter to 20 meters. So you get 20 different sizes of each of the different diameters of the wood. Now, you may ask, why would I do that? Why do I go to that much trouble? Well, these are 
These are not just prims. These are these are mesh beams that have bevels on them. So the edges are rounded. I'll try and zoom in on it so you can see it. So you can see the edges are rounded off. So what happens if you stretch that? Say if I just give you one size and then you need to stretch it down or stretch it up to fit where you want it, that bevel deforms. And so the longer that you stretch it, the more pointy that bevel becomes to the point where it starts to look like a sharpened pencil. And you need it to have this bevel or close to this bevel all the time for it to look right. So by giving you 20 lengths, you can basically pick you know, whatever you're building. Say you need a, a three meter board. Well, then you just pick the one that's the three meter one and you use that. Now, you can stretch them to fill because you know everything's not exactly set to fixed lengths, right? So you can stretch them as you need. You can either stretch them down or stretch them up, but by the fact that they're one meter increments, that means you really only need to stretch it up to a half a meter. So if you're stretching it up and you go beyond a half meter, it's better to go to the next size up and scale it down instead of trying to stretch the other one. That avoids a lot of the deformity that you would see otherwise. So again, you have different sizes, 0.25 by 0.25 all the way up to one meter by one meter. And uh, you can use them for anything. You can, you can just build, like a, if you want to build a fence, you can use those to build a fence. You want to build any kind of wooden object, you can just use those and, and connect them together and build a raft if you want. So that's, is that everything? I think that's everything in the kit. Floors, roofs, walls, windows, doors, steps. Oh, and then I have a bunch of extra things that I'm throwing in. So I have a beer mug. I have a beer mug that has a shadow underneath it so you can put it out on a countertop or, or uh, wherever you want. And then I also have a beer mug that you can wear and it has scripts in it so you actually drink it. And as you drink it, if you use the debauchery drinking system, your avatar actually gets drunk and will stagger around and eventually fall down. But as you drink it, um, once you have enough, once you've emptied it, it disappears. So you have to wear another one to drink more. This is part of our role-playing series and eventually it's going to be incorporated into a lot more of our role-playing features. Um, also gave you this barrel and these are all copy mod and copy so if you want a smaller barrel you can shrink it down if you need a bigger fatter one you can stretch it. So I give you the barrel, two different kinds of beer or ale mugs, I give you this big floor standing ale keg and then a small table size or a bar top keg as well. So you could use this to make a tavern. I also sell a bar and I sell bar stools and I'm selling um, a, I haven't put it out yet but I will be soon a, a bar tavern table with four stools um, and more stuff. So you could use this to create a tavern. Now that's the kit but how do you use it? So let's let's give you an example. Let's start with something, I'm going to make something um, a little bit larger than just the basics. So um, all of these things are considered like a, a, a kid's Lincoln log set or something like that, right? or building blocks. So let's start with a floor. Let's take this one, it's a 15 by 15. And a 15 by 15 is designed to have two wall segments on each side. So the, the wall segments are, I call it seven, but it's actually about seven and a half. And then they have overlapping. So you would take two walls on each side. So that would give us a fairly large room, but I want to go bigger than that. So we're going to pull a copy of it over here by holding down shift and dragging it over here. And then I'm going to snap this to the grid so that it, it's uniform. I'm going to put it right there on 92 meters and then the other way I'm going to snap it to the grid and put it on, let's do 136. Okay, so it's at 136 by 92. And the boards are running this way. So now I want to get Actually, let's turn it. I want the boards to go across this way. I don't know why. So that's 15 by... Actually, let's... Yeah, that's fine. So I want to make this wider. I want it to go three across and two deep. And so to do that, I'm going to take the 7 by 15 floor. I'm going to take a copy of that. And we're going to put it right here next to that. Let's change the texture on this. I'm going to go, where's my texture changer? I have a box that's called the texture changer. Let me show you that feature. This is a really cool feature. So it's a, 
Antiquity Medieval Builder Kit A Texture Manager. So what we're going to do is you click that, and a menu pops up. And then you can change the textures of all the pieces at one time. So let's just do the foundation. We're going to set the foundation to use cobbles. And you notice it just changed. And then we're going to set the floor to be, let's go floor, planks, medieval. So you notice that the floor all changed to this other kind of wood. It's still resing in, so it's not quite clear. And it did it on these two. Now you'll see the, the grain on this boards, these boards go this way and the ones that go this way. So I want to try to line them up. So let's turn this. And then I think I said 92. And then let's try to get it as close as we can. I have my grid snap set to 0.125 meters, so I get a little more granular control. But it's not quite perfect. So let's just get them as close as we can so that there's a very little gap. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, because <coughs> that's one of the use of the beams, is you can lay a beam vert or horizontally here to cover this gap, and I'm going to do that. So this is 15 meters across. So I need a 15 meter beam. And I don't need a huge one, so let's just go grab the second smallest size. But we'll do 15. So this is one meter. You can tell you can tell by the size. I, I, I didn't name them right, so I apologize for that. I may fix that at some point. But you can tell this one's just under one meter. And so we just count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And just make sure it's 14.97, so that's the one. Then let's drag it out, shift drag, to get a copy. And let's move it over there by where we're building. Then we will straighten it out, because it's at a it's sitting over there at an angle right now. So let's just straighten it. We're gonna rotate it so that it's it looks like this. And then we're going to drop it down on top of this so that it kind of goes into the board partially. So that it gets down in there like this. Because you don't want it sticking up because people will trip over it, right? So you want it to be fairly just about that high. Could even go lower. And then drag it over here so that it covers the whole width at 92. And it's okay that it doesn't come all the way out because our, our building is probably not going to come all the way out there either. The floors were made intentionally to have a little bit of space around them. So the interesting thing about these floors, they're not just floors, it's floors with a foundation underneath it, which is used for the bottom floor of your building. If you need to stretch that foundation piece, you can. Uh, if you if you have a really, you want to put the building up high. Uh, I wouldn't do too much. If you need, uh, it's better to do like a prim base if you have to put a, a bigger base underneath it. Anyway, so we've got our rooms here. And now what I want to do is I'm going to put some wings on the back over here and make it even bigger. So we're going to take the 7x7. Seven seven. Oh, actually, I want this. I want the 3 across to be the front because I want the, I want the door to be in the middle section. So let's do that. So let's rotate this. And then when I bring this piece in, I'm going to put it right in the middle and I don't know is this still I don't think it's at 92 anymore I'm gonna link these together so that I can uh, center it and when you link them you'll notice that they got smaller it's now three prims just for the two floor pieces then I'm gonna center that whole thing Let's go ahead and link that in it, too. They're not going to change. All right, so now I have one piece there that I can center on 92 meters. Then I can center this one on 92 meters, and they're going to line. Oops, they're going to line up. I do this to make things easier on myself. We've got a little bit of a gap, so just tighten it up. Like that. The height should be the same because I rezzed them out. Okay. 
Now this is seven meters wide, so I'm going to go grab a plank from seven meters. One of these beams. So the same size, which is 0 0.5 by 0.25. One, two, three, four, five. Oops, not five. Seven. Six, seven. And it's 6.96 meters, so that's the correct one. Now let's drag that all the way over here. that where's the dark piece that's the dark one kind of like this same thing going to drag it down so most of it is hidden and then we're going to put it over that gap so that it crosses over the gap like this and then I think I center it at 92 there we go so now it's in place. Now, usually I put those in later because it's kind of hard for you to conceptualize what those actually are. But uh, my grandparents used to live in an old country farmhouse that was built you know, over 100 years ago, built like in the 1800s. And all of the, in between the rooms, all had wood beams like this on the floor that you would, you, they stuck up like this. And it, it gives a real earthy feel to it too. But it can hide any kind of seams that you, that you have. All right, so now we've got our floor laid out. It's time to start grabbing some uh, some walls. So I want this to be the entrance. I want this to be the entrance right here at the front. People are going to walk in this way, and then there's going to be windows on both sides. So let's go grab the doorway one and two window ones, walls. So there's the doorway wall, and there's the window wall. So let's go ahead and take both of those. We're going to drag them over there. And then when I get there, I can clone the this so now we have the walls that we want and then all you do is drag them into place so you can see they're lower I need to raise them up to oops I need to raise them up to the level of my floor so just kind of eyeball it up until you get them to where you want them uh, you want to make sure you, you don't have any visible cracks or gaps underneath them and then uh, oh, I don't need that one Oh, that I was raising it up to get them all at the same level. That's why I had all three selected. But I don't need to move all three to get them in here. So I think I can just put this at 92 so it's centered. And then these, you need to make sure you rotate them so that the lighter colored one is on the outside. This is the dark one. It should be on the inside. So let's rotate this one 90 degrees that way. This one will rotate 90 degrees the other way. And then you're just going to put them in here so that they, ideally you would want them to be like right there, right here where the walls just touch like that. But uh, having some overlap is okay. So let's have a little bit of overlap this way. And we'll leave it, we'll leave it right there with some overlap on that. So I want to make sure these two line up with each other. So the easiest way to do that is just kind of, you can actually copy the whole position thing and then place it on this one. And then, now they overlap, right? And then just move it over. And then you're going to move it out until it's like right there. So now I have the front of my building done. I have a window on one side, a window on the other, and a doorway here. Um, then for these pieces, I want to have windows on the front. So I'm going to put a window here and a window there. And I'm just going to copy these. Put it where it wants to go. Let me set it up. I'm not quite sure on the sizing of this until we get everything in place, and then we can move them once they're there. So let's just clone that and drag it over to here. And then if there are gaps where these corners come together, we can use beams to fill that in. Okay. So the reason I'm not being too particular with the positioning of these front pieces is because I'm going to put some walls across the back, and 
I'll align these walls with the ones that are going to go in the back. So in the back, I want solid walls the whole way, but let's put an X in the middle and then two other ones on each side. What I mean by an X is the pattern on the Tudor wall, this one here. So I want to take this one for the middle. And let's do, uh, let's do the vertical ones. And I need two of those. And remember, you got to rotate them so that the dark is on the inside. All three of them rotate. We're going to raise them up to the same height as these. Let's make sure these are all the same height and copy the height. Is it the same? It looks the same. Yeah, it was the same. And then just do the same thing for these three pieces so I don't have to worry about it. Put some at the same height. Okay, now they're all at the same height. And we can start putting them up where we want. So I want this one on the left. I want this one in the middle. And then I want this one on the far, left, far right. Now, let's get them lined up. This one goes to 92 because it's in the center. And then these two, we're going to get it out to the edge. There. Put these on the edge. OK. And now. Just bring these in. So that there's no visible gap. You can see when it when the gap goes away is when that bevel, the edge of the bevel here and the edge of the bevel there touch. Which is right about there. Again, you don't have to be perfect because we can cover the gaps with beams. But let's do the same thing on this side. I need to be where I can see it. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to replicate the um, position on the green axis the y-axis from that one to this one and I hope it matches because I think though this one has the window cut out it might not have the same exact center position I'm oh, sorry green y-axis let's see what happens yep okay it worked do the same thing here copy this one and paste it on this one Now we have the front walls, the back walls, and we need the side walls. So for the side walls, let's do, um, let's just use windows. We're going to have a lot of windows in this. This is going to be a tavern. And for my tavern, I want to be able to see a lot. So let's kind of put this here for now. And we can. Adjusted. So I want to pull this up a little bit to there. And then on this side, let's just see where it, what it looks like when I put two of them on there. Again, we're going to move that until the gap just disappears. Best to look at the bottom. You can see the point right there. Just pull it out a little bit and then slide it over. Save there to be safe. That touches there. That looks good. Is there a gap there? There's a little bit of a gap. So we can pull these in. I think that means this is not in the exact same position. So let's pull those over just a That tightened the gap, but it's more of a gap this way, isn't it? Yeah. 
I'm gonna undo that. Did it undo it? I don't think it did. That did. So that was weird to undo. I had to select them and then undo. The problem is this is too far back. So we'll pull it in just a little bit. There we go. Now I want the same thing on this side, so I'm just going to take these walls, spin it around, and then drag it until it is there. Now we've got our floor done. So we can actually run over here as I run very awkwardly. I don't have my AO on. <laughs> it gets in my way a lot because I have so many things that I do where I have to keep turning it off, so I just I just generally leave it off. Oh, now this reminds me that I'm missing something here, so let's go grab the steps. And we'll put the steps in place. Like I said, this has everything you need to make a house or a building. Now, you can make it a lot fancier by adding things like fireplaces, which we don't currently make, but we will. I'm take it there, center that on 92 as well. Now one thing I want to do is I just noticed that my whole thing's floating in the air, so let's just take everything and lower it down a little bit before I add the windows, because then it gets kind of interesting. I also noticed a gap that I'm going to try to fix. Is that everything? Looks like everything. Now it's everything. I oh, didn't have that beam selected. So let's just drop this down until we get the steps into the floor. Okay, there we go. What I noticed was this gap here. So the way I'm going to fix that gap is I'm going to take everything that we've got here and move it forward a little bit just to fill that gap in. Oops, can't do that because now I'm over the side. I need to move the other part. Oh, I need to snap it. Let's, let's put it there. So that means the problem isn't this is too far to the left. This is all too far to the right. So we grab this, including the floor and the steps. Just pull it in a little bit. Keep an eye on the floor down here and see where the uh, seam moves to. There. So now let's just grab our beam that covers the seam. Let's see if we can find the seam. There, I see the seam. See the seam right there? So we're going to go cover that. And. We can stretch it and just pull it into there so that the ends are covered. Okay. Now I'm pretty satisfied with the overall wall structure. Okay, so what's next? Let's put a roof on this guy. So this has a 23 by 15 space and a 7 by 7 space. So I have these two different roof panels that we're going to use. This is a 23 by 15. And we're going to turn it to be oriented to the house there. And we're just going to lay it in. Try to center it on what's here. until oh, you gotta move it so that these beams kind of line up okay now there's there's a gap you can see it here so I want to lower it down until the gap goes away oops I'll raise it up lower it down is there a 
I don't see a gap anymore. But this is sticking out too much, so pull this back until those beams kind of line up a little more. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see this one's sticking out more, so let's pull it this way. About halfway. So we have a gap here, and then let's see, it should have about the same size on this side. Yep, okay, that looks good. So we're gonna leave that as it is. Uh, and now we need a, a roof for this section. So we grab the small roof, shift, drag it, bring it over to 92. See, I, I snapped to the grid. So many of the things that I've done are tied to this 92 meter mark. Um, it just makes things faster and easier. If it's not perfect, that's okay. You can make it perfect later. so that there's no gap anymore. And adjust it where you want it. And now we have a roof over that, which looks to be fairly centered. We're almost there. Now what we need is, um, I will show you one of them. I'm probably not gonna do all of them because for me, it's good enough. But you could put beams in all of the corners. You could put a beam, a vertical beam here. You could put one here. You could put it here. You could put one on all the places where these come together. Um, it'll help you get rid of that kind of shape, this L shape that's here. It'll make it look more. Uh, how did that get so far forward? I drag your ass into here. And then my whole roof needs to go back. Okay. Yes, that's better. I don't know how that happened. Oh, I, I think I probably didn't have it selected when I moved everything else up. Okay, so I'm not even going to mess with this. I don't want to put any beams in here right now. I think it looks good. If I find some holes in there later, we can do that at the, as the final touch. Right now, let's do the windows. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight windows. Okay, I created a big job for myself. Let's get the one with the nine panels. And let's go over here. Again, one side is darker than the other, and you gotta check. It's a little harder to see on this. That looks pretty dark. That looks lighter. So this is the outside. Now how we do this, I think you can try this. You can get the center of this would be where the red axis is, so this is the center of it. Let's try that and see if they would, if that'll work. Then center this one in the same place and see where it goes. Looks like it might work. Then just raise it up to where you want it. Then we're going to push it into the window frame. And what you want to do is you want to have about the same distance on this side, on the outside of the window, on this window frame that you have on this side. So you just look and you go, mm, okay, that looks like, I don't know, a few inches. And this is probably a little wider, but it's not that bad. So just move it just a hair. That looks about the same. And then left to right, you just want to make sure that this blue line here, which is the edge, and when it could be, I think it's always the blue line. Uh, you just want to try to hide that inside this wood. See it's hidden here, hidden here, hidden there. So just pull it until it kind of goes away. And you still want it to be hidden on both sides. If you need to stretch this window to fill the gap, if, if it's easier for it, you can do that. It doesn't really matter. It's your, uh, it's your window. You can do with it what you want. But to do that, you just click stretch. Then you grab one of these white handles and you give it a slight little pull. You don't want to change it a whole lot. You don't want to come out here like this. You just want to do subtle changes so that it looks like it's supposed to be there okay now for the other windows they all need to be the same height easiest way to do that is just clone this window so we're gonna clone it we're gonna turn it the right direction copy this time it's the green axis the y-axis on this one copy that and then paste it on here and 
<laughs> that didn't work. Where did it go? Come back to me. What's over here? I must have used the wrong one. Uh, oh, yeah. Huh? I can probably do both the green and the red. So let's, I think I probably posted, pasted it to the wrong place. So let's copy the red. That'll get us in the middle. It should put us right in the middle of the, the wall. Which it did. And then we want the y-axis, which is going to put us in the center of the window hole. Copy. Paste. And there it is. So let's do the same thing. Let's just grab this window. We're going to drag it out to here. I picked that one because it's the same orientation. Um, then we're going to copy the... Let's go to the green one first to get it centered. Paste. And then now let's do the red x-axis to put it in place. Control C. Control V. And there it goes. We're going to clone it again, drag it over, and I'm just going to eyeball it. Uh, actually, let's make it precise. Copy. You may ask, why did I care? I made it precise so that I can copy it and spin it to put over here. So we're going to shift drag both windows, and then we're going to rotate them 180 degrees. Oops. And then we're going to drag them in where they belong. And uh, this one I am just going to eyeball it. Uh, it's about right there check to make sure they're still lined up. That one looks like it's a little bit close this way. That one too. Sometimes when you spin them around 180 degrees and if they're not exactly centered, it'll shift it left or right a bit. Yeah, because I don't see it on this side. Alright, so now we have windows in every... Th oh, we still have two windows missing. So let's take this window. Drag it over, and then I'm just going to eyeball it in place because it's it's correct on two of the axes. It's just this uh, y axis that I need to worry about. Get it so that it looks the same on this side as it does that side. That's good. Now, take this window, drag it over, and spin it around. Put it in the window, eyeball it, and make sure it's about the same on both sides. That looks probably pretty good on this side. And a little more there. And then do the same thing this way. And there. All right, now let's look at our building. Got all the windows, the banks done. Windows all the way around this side. Only thing left to do is the door. So let's go grab the door. Right now the door is in two pieces. I I may change that because I figured out it doesn't matter if I link them. I was afraid if I linked it it would break the scripts, but linking it doesn't seem to affect it in any way because it uses cool door scripts and cool door scripts are cool. But let's put it where it goes. All right, the hinges on this right now are on the right side, and if I were to click on this door. Let's go ahead and put it kind of close to being in place. Mm. I'm not going to fit it just right yet. So if I put the door this way, and then when you click on it, it opens to the outside. Well, your exterior doors you want always to open to the inside. Because that way you can bar the door on the inside to, to lock it so people can't get in. If you put it this way then somebody outside can bar the door and prevent you from getting out, which is, you never want to do that. So always remember, exterior doors open inside. And the other thing to notice is the door is not as wide as this door frame. So you, you, you might think you would put it right here in the middle, but if you do that, when the door opens, it actually runs into this wall. And uh, you don't want that. So hinges need to be in the gap between the wood of the door and the wood of the frame. 
and then they have to mount somewhere. You can't mount them in the middle without digging out the, the column, and that's way too much work. So we're just going to put it so right about there. And it's okay to have gaps with your doors, but you don't want gaps that big. You want this to be positioned right in that little gap. And then if you look at the hinge, you can see when it's touching the wood, that's when you want to put it. You want to move it so that it's just against the wood, like right there. Okay, I think that's that's done. Now if you click the door, it opens inside. Okay. So we have finished building our little building. But let's see if we can change the textures on it. So I'm going to go get my texture changer, uh, bring it over here. It doesn't have to be that close, but I'm bringing it over here just for convenience sake so we can see what's happening. And let's change our tutor walls. So let's click on this. Let's pick wall. Then instead of, uh, let's look at what the stones are. So we have brown, which I think is the one that's there. Yeah, this is the brown stones. Then we have flagstones, and we have gray stones. So I provide three different stone options and two stucco options. That's what comes in the basic kit now. If, uh, if there's a lot of demand for more textures, what we'll do is a, we'll have a texture add-on kit that will provide, that will provide you know, a variety of other textures as well. So this has a tan colored stucco and a white colored stucco. So let's go with the tan colored stucco. Then the roof, I like this roof, but if I wanted to change it, I'd give you two different styles of roof. This is a slate roof, but I also provide a shingles roof. Okay. That's kind of cute. So let's go inside. Open the door and we'll walk in. Here we are. So if you think this uh, floor, if you, if you want it darker, maybe you like this pattern, but you want it darker, you can just darken it up. So you can do that by adding a tint to it. So we're going to edit the uh, select face, click on the floor panels, and shift click the other ones. So you have all three floor panels picked, and then just go to texture, color, and you can darken it up if you, if you want to darken it up. Now, when you go back to the texture changer and you change the floor texture again, it's going to revert back, so you, it won't keep your darkness. Um, I kind of like that, but let's go, let's go play with the texture changer again, and uh, let's change the floor to look different. Let's see what different floor options we have. So we have floor. We have some cobblestones. Ooh, that one's messed up. I thought I fixed. Oh, it's because I linked them. Yeah. Remember I linked the floor? So because I linked them, it broke the texture changer in there. So what I can do to fix that is we'll just unlink it. That puts the pieces back. Now, um, this, is the, this is this one, right? So we need to see, okay, the top is the root prim. So let me uh, link it that way. And then on the 15, 15 by 15 floor, which one's the root print? Same thing, the top is the root print. So select the bottom one, then shift select the top one and do link. Now it should just work when I do the texture changer again. I'm gonna click it. I hope, otherwise I gotta replace the floor. Hey, it worked. So now we have a stone floor. You have dirty cobbles, you can have flagstones, um, you can have some old stone. Oh, and the seam is there now, what? That's not even covering the seam. The seam is there. Yeah, it's covering the scene. Um, there's also some wood planks for the floor. So you have aged wood, 
Armado, which kind of looks nice. Brown, Cherry, what I call Dirty. Uh, this is called Medieval. <coughs> There's a Rustic. That looks kind of cool. Kind of matches. And then uh, Weathered, which is gray. I didn't know the planks go the other way on that one, too. Let's go with the cherry. Okay. So, one thing you can do now, um, once you have this built out, let's see how big it is. So, I'm going to jump out of it by double click teleporting out. And then uh, move this out of the way. Let's just try to edit it. Select everything. I hope I didn't pick up anything. Oh, got that. Okay. Yep. You can tell you don't have anything extra because the the uh, movement handles are centered on the objects. That means I didn't have some. If I had something really far away, that would get halfway between each of them. And you could tell. So right now it's definitely in the middle of this. And it says it is 80, 80 li. So the land impact on this is 80. So I can reduce that by a significant amount by linking all this together. So the th problem is if I link it now with all of those texture changer scripts in there, uh, the texture changes are going to break anyway. So, and you won't be able to change it. So my advice is, before you link it, go through and remove all of the texture changer stuff. So set the textures the way you want them, and get it to look how you want, then click on each piece, and I'll show you how to do that. So like you click on this wall, go to contents, that's the scripts and the texture changers. So you can get rid of those. Uh, you can take, you can just take everything in here and delete it. But don't only do it for the texture changer strip. The door has its own stuff. The door does not have a texture changer. It has its own script. So don't do the door. But do every other piece. You can just go in here, select these and delete them. Pick the roof, select these and delete them. Just delete them all. Delete all the scripts once you have it looking the way you want. Um, then you can link it. Uh, I'm not going to go through the process of deleting everything, but I will link this so you can see it happen. Okay. Now it's 80 Li, and when I link it, it's 51. So this building is now 51 primed, as opposed to 80. So that's a significant reduction. And it still works. The door still opens. And I can still go inside. I can explore around inside my building. So that was pretty simple. Hopefully you get the idea. It's very simple to create buildings very rapidly. You can do any kind of floor plan that you want. But again, the walls are for exterior walls. There are no, I don't provide any interior walls right now. We're going to do a separate interior wall kit when we do the second floor add-on as well. Um, there may be two. There may be an interior walls add-on. There may be a second floor add-on. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to package it right now. I don't, I don't like, I don't want to come out with, you know, a windows package, a wall package, a floor package, a roof package. Uh, I want to give you something that you can actually take one kit and build buildings. So when I do the second floor kit, it'll be an add-on to this. So with the second floor kit and the first floor kit, you can build complete multi-store buildings. Anyway, that's it for um, the demo of how to use the Antiquity Builder's Kit, Medieval Builder's Kit, to build a medieval building. Uh, this would make a perfect tavern. Uh, put a bunch of bar, bars in the back, put some cabinets, barrels, put some tables out here, and, and you have your own medieval, medieval uh, tavern. Just need a sign out front, and you're ready to go. Okay, thanks for... Uh, Thanks for watching this and paying attention. I hope, hope I didn't bore you. 